Part 4 of Beyond Good and Evil is titled Epigrams and Interludes. This is a transitional part between the first three and the last five parts of the book. It is about 15 pages long in the Kaufman translation and consists of 125 numbered sections. Most of these sections are a single sentence, they are basically tweet length, and you will find some of Nietzsche's most memorable and famous quotes in this section. I think Nietzsche means these epigrams as a kind of palate cleanser for the reader, so I recommend that you browse through them, don't try to read too deeply for meaning, but appreciate Nietzsche's style and wit as he touches lightly on themes that he has already raised and that he will continue to develop in the latter half of the book. Here is a selection of my favorite sections from this part, jumping around and arranging them thematically. Enjoy. On the topic of crime, section 109, a criminal is frequently not equal to his deed. He makes it smaller and slanders it. Also, section 110, the lawyers defending a criminal are rarely artists enough to turn the beautiful terribleness of his deed to his advantage. And section 116, the great epochs of our life come when we gain the courage to rechristen our evil as what is best in us. On the character of the great man, Nietzsche tells us in section 74, a man with spirit is unbearable if he does not also have at least two other things, gratitude and cleanliness. Also on the topic of the great man, section 126, a people, ein Volk, is a detour of nature to get to six or seven great men, yes, and then to get around them. Also, section 167, in men who are hard, intimacy involves shame and is precious. Walter Kaufman notes that many of these epigrams foreshadow Freud in significant ways. Among these is number 68. I have done that, says my memory. I cannot have done that, says my pride, and remains inexorable. Eventually, memory yields. Number 75. The degree and kind of a man's sexuality reach up into the ultimate pinnacle of his spirit. Section 158. To our strongest drive, the tyrant in us, not only our reason bows, but also our conscience. And finally, section 146. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And when you look long into an abyss, the abyss also looks into you. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of part four of Beyond Good and Evil. We'll look at part five next. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.